This week I want to talk about something serious. The economy, income inequality, poverty. No, I'm just kidding. Let's talk about Star Wars. Woo! New trailer! The full-length trailer for the new Star Wars movie was aired during Monday Night Football this week, forcing millions of Star Wars geeks to try and figure out what cable channel ESPN is on. Is it channel 30 or channel 29? What do you mean there's two ESPNs? And I, like most Star Wars fans, watched the trailer once and said, hmm, looks pretty good. Nah, just kidding. I watched that shit like 80 times. I watched it on my cell phone, on my tablet, on my laptop. Then I streamed it through Chromecast in high definition onto my 55-inch screen TV. I analyzed every second of it. Is that Han and Leia's daughter? Is Luke Skywalker's son a black guy? Did R2-D2 and C-3PO have a baby? So many questions that need answering. And none of it will be revealed until December. But luckily, tickets already went on sale this past Monday, and Star Wars nerds broke the internet. Movie ticket websites like MovieTickets.com and Fandango were crashing all night. For hours, I kept getting error messages like this after I entered my credit card info. So I'm not sure if I bought four tickets or 28 tickets, but it doesn't matter. And neither company would say how many tickets were sold completely, but one representative said it was at least eight times the pre-sales of the previous record holder, Hunger Games. Eight times. Suck on that, Katniss Everdeen. Now, Star Wars The Force Awakens will easily become the number one movie of all time. The trailer has already been viewed over 24 million times on YouTube and Facebook, and within one hour of the new trailer airing, it was tweeted about more than 2.1 million times. Star Wars is a movie phenomenon. I still wear Star Wars t-shirts. And the toy line is still the most successful toy line of all time. And you can bet you'll see a lot of sleazy Princess Leia's and Boba Sluts this Halloween. And speaking of sleazy Leia, the original bikini outfit that she wore in the movies was recently auctioned off and sold for $96,000. Which is fine, because I'm pretty sure Carrie Fisher won't be wearing it ever again. But we live in America, and nothing is above controversy. Not even a movie saga as beloved and cherished as Star Wars. Apparently there are some people boycotting the movie because one of the stars is a black guy. And of course they're protesting with the stern practice of hashtags and tweets. Now Star Wars geeks know that stormtroopers are supposed to all be clones of Jango Fett. And he was neither white or black. He was kind of brown, to be honest. But actually, he was Mandalorian and played by an actor who was from New Zealand in real life. But who the hell cares? The Star Wars universe has always been diverse. They've got Wookiees, Ewoks, talking calamari, this asshole. Even the Cantina Band was made up of aliens with asses for heads. The only way you would be discriminated against in Star Wars was if you were a droid. Hey. We don't serve their kind here. This whole racist idea of attacking Star Wars makes no sense. This isn't the first black guy to ever appear in Star Wars. There was Lando Calrissian, Mace Windu, the Red Five guy who got blown up. I think his rapper name was Grizz Fricks. And of course, the most famous black guy of all, Darth Vader, who actually turned out to be a white guy, but he was voiced by a black guy. Black or white, it's all kind of confusing now. What about you guys? We ain't found shit. And look, if you're racist and you want to boycott the Star Wars movie, by all means do it. It just means shorter lines for the rest of us. So stay home and watch Star Trek. The black guys on that show always ended up wearing red shirts anyway. <laughs>